Question 1. What is the minimum internal cooking temperature for poultry? A. 145 degree Fahrenheit, 63 degree Celsius. B. 155 degree Fahrenheit, 68 degree Celsius. C. 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius. D. 175 degree Fahrenheit, 80 degree Celsius. Answer C. 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius. The minimum internal cooking temperature for poultry is 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius, to ensure harmful bacteria are killed. Question 2. Explain the danger zone temperature range in which bacteria grow most rapidly. A. 32 degree Fahrenheit to 70 degree Fahrenheit. 0 degrees Celsius to 21 degrees Celsius. B. 40 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit. 4 degrees Celsius to 60 degree Celsius. C. 50 degree Fahrenheit to 120 degree Fahrenheit. 10 degrees Celsius to 49 degrees Celsius. D. 60 degree Fahrenheit to 160 degree Fahrenheit. 15 degrees Celsius to 71 degrees Celsius. Answer B. 40 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit. 4 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius. The danger zone temperature range where bacteria grow most rapidly is between 40 degree Fahrenheit and 140 degree Fahrenheit. 4 degrees Celsius and 60 degrees Celsius. Question 3. Describe the steps to take when you suspect a foodborne illness outbreak in your establishment. A. Notify the local health department, isolate the suspected food, and shut down the establishment. B. Notify the local health department, document the illness, and cooperate with the investigation. C. Discard all food items, sanitize the establishment, and notify only the staff. D. Close the establishment immediately and wait for customer complaints. Answer. B. Notify the local health department document the illness, and cooperate with the investigation. These are crucial steps for handling a suspected foodborne illness outbreak. Question 4. What are the critical control points in a standard AKCCP plan? A. Cooking, serving, and storing. B. Purchasing, cooking, and serving. C. Cooking, cooling, and reheating. D. Receiving, storing, and preparing. Answer. D. Receiving, storing, and preparing. Critical control points in an AACCP plan typically include receiving, storing, and preparing food. Question 5. Identify the main symptoms of a norovirus infection. A. Headache and fever. B. Diarrhea and vomiting. C. Skin rash and itchiness. D. Sore throat and coughing. Answer. B. Diarrhea and vomiting. The main symptoms of a norovirus infection are diarrhea and vomiting. Question 6. Describe the procedures for ensuring food safety when using sous vide cooking methods in a commercial kitchen. A. Cook at high temperatures for short periods. B. Use only pre-packaged foods. C. Maintain precise temperature control and use airtight bags. D. Cook at room temperature. Answer. C. Maintain precise temperature control and use airtight bags. Sosvide cooking requires maintaining precise temperature control and using airtight bags to ensure food safety. Question 7. What is cross-contamination and how can it be prevented? A. Transfer of bacteria from hands to food, prevented by wearing gloves. B. Transfer of allergens from one food to another, prevented by cooking at high temperatures. C. Transfer of bacteria from one food to another, prevented by cleaning and separating foods. D. Transfer of toxins from containers to food, prevented by using food-grade materials. Answer. C. Transfer of bacteria from one food to another, prevented by cleaning and separating foods. Cross-contamination is the transfer of bacteria from one food to another, which can be prevented by proper cleaning and separating foods. Question 8. 
Explain the importance of hand washing in food safety. A. It enhances the food's flavor. B. It is only necessary after handling raw meat. C. It prevents the spread of foodborne pathogens. D. It is a substitute for using gloves. Answer. C. It prevents the spread of foodborne pathogens. Hand washing is crucial in food safety as it prevents the spread of foodborne pathogens. Question 9. What are the primary sources of salmonella in food establishments? A. Raw meats and poultry. B. Coped vegetables and fruits. C. Dairy products and eggs. D. Breads and cereals. Answer. A. Raw meats and poultry. Raw meats and poultry are primary sources of salmonella in food establishments. Question 10. Describe the proper procedure for using a three-compartment sink. A. Rinse, wash, then sanitize. B. Wash, rinse, then sanitize. C. Sanitize, rinse, then wash. D. Wash, sanitize, then rinse. Answer. B. Wash, rinse, then sanitize. The proper procedure for using a three-compartment sink is to wash, rinse, then sanitize. Question 11. What are the best practices for thawing frozen food safely? A. At room temperature on the counter. B. Under cold running water, in the refrigerator, or in the microwave. C. In hot water. D. Using a heat lamp. Answer. B. Under cold running water, in the refrigerator, or in the microwave. The best practices for thawing frozen food safely include under cold running water, in the refrigerator, or using a microwave. Question 12. Explain the role of time temperature control in preventing foodborne illness. A. It ensures food is cooked for a long duration. B. It prevents the growth of bacteria by controlling the duration and temperature of cooking and storage. C. It focuses on high temperature cooking only. D. It is relevant only during food storage, not cooking. Answer. B. It prevents the growth of bacteria by controlling the duration and temperature of cooking and storage. Time temperature control is essential in preventing foodborne illness by controlling the duration and temperature of cooking and storage. Question 13. What are the guidelines for safe ice handling in food service? A. Use bare hands to dispense ice. B. Treat ice as food and use clean, sanitized scoops. C. Store ice near raw meat for convenience. D. Use the same scoop for food and ice. Answer. B. Treat ice as food and use clean, sanitized scoops. Safe ice handling in food service requires treating ice as food and using clean, sanitized scoops. Question 14. How should chemical sanitizers be used and stored in a kitchen? A. Mixed with soap for effectiveness. B. At the highest concentration possible. C. According to manufacturer's instructions and away from food areas. D. Only for cleaning equipment, not surfaces. Answer. C. According to manufacturer's instructions and away from food areas. Chemical sanitizers should be used and stored as per the manufacturer's instructions and kept away from food areas. Question 15. What is the most effective way to prevent hepatitis A in food service? A. Using only canned or frozen foods. B. Regular pest control. C. Frequent hand washing and proper sanitation. D. Cooking food at high temperatures. Answer. C. Frequent hand washing and proper sanitation. Frequent hand washing and proper sanitation are the most effective ways to prevent hepatitis A in food service. Question 16. Define the term foodborne pathogen. A. A tool used to measure food temperature. B. A beneficial bacteria used in food processing. C. A microorganism that causes food spoilage. D. A microorganism that can cause disease when consumed. Answer. D. A microorganism that can cause disease when consumed. A foodborne pathogen is a microorganism that can cause disease when consumed. Question 17. What are the differences between cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting in a food establishment? A. 
Cleaning removes visible dirt. Sanitizing reduces bacteria to safe levels. Disinfecting kills all organisms. B. Cleaning and sanitizing are the same. Disinfecting is for medical equipment. C. Sanitizing and disinfecting are the same. Cleaning uses detergents only. D. Disinfecting and cleaning are the same. Sanitizing uses high temperatures. Answer. A. Cleaning removes visible dirt. Sanitizing reduces bacteria to safe levels. Disinfecting kills all organisms. Cleaning involves removing visible dirt. Sanitizing reduces bacteria to safe levels. And disinfecting aims to kill all organisms. Question 18. How does the feed level of food affect bacterial growth? A. For level has no effect on bacterial growth. B. Higher Fe levels promote bacterial growth. C. Lower Fe levels, more acidity, inhibit bacterial growth. D. Only neutral Fe levels inhibit bacterial growth. Answer. C. Lower Fe levels, more acidity, inhibit bacterial growth. Lower Fe levels in food, which are more acidic, tend to inhibit bacterial growth. Question 19. What are the key signs of pest infestation in a food service area? A. Unusual odors and grease marks. B. Presence of droppings, nesting materials, and damage to packaging. C. Frequent equipment breakdowns. D. High humidity levels. Answer. B. Presence of droppings, nesting materials, and damage to packaging. Key signs of pest infestation include the presence of droppings, nesting materials, and damage to food packaging. Question 20. What are the critical factors in choosing the right type of cutting board for different food types? A. Color and size of the cutting board. B. Material and ease of cleaning. C. Thickness and weight. D. Brand and price. Answer. B. Material and ease of cleaning. The critical factors in choosing a cutting board for different food types are the material of the cutting board and how easy it is to clean. Question 21. Explain the concept of FIFO. First in, first out, and its importance in food storage. A. Stocking new items behind older ones. B. Using older food products before newer ones. C. Storing food based on its nutritional value. D. Organizing food alphabetically for storage. Answer. B. Using older food products before newer ones. FIFO, first in, first out, is a method where older food products are used before newer ones to ensure food freshness and minimize waste. Question 22. What are the specific food safety procedures to follow when preparing gluten-free meals in a commercial kitchen? A. Avoiding the use of dairy products. B. Using separate equipment and storage areas. C. Cooking food at higher temperatures. D. Using only organic ingredients. Answer. B. Using separate equipment and storage areas. To ensure food safety for gluten-free meals, it's important to use separate equipment and storage areas to prevent cross-contamination. Question 23. What are the guidelines for reheating food to ensure it's safe for consumption? A. Reheat to room temperature. B. Heat to at least 145 degree Fahrenheit, 63 degree Celsius. C. Reheat to a minimum of 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius for 15 seconds. D. Warm in a microwave for at least one minute. Answer. C. Reheat to a minimum of 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius for 15 seconds. Reheating food to 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius for 15 seconds ensures that it's safe for consumption by killing any potential pathogens. Question 24. Describe the procedures for handling a customer's food allergy notification. A. Ignore the notification as it's not a kitchen concern. B. Recommend only vegan dishes to the customer. C. Communicate the allergy to the entire staff and use separate utensils and equipment. D. Serve only raw foods to the customer. Answer. C. Communicate the allergy to the entire staff and use separate utensils and equipment.
Handling a food allergy notification involves communicating the allergy to the staff and using separate utensils and equipment to prevent cross-contamination. Question 25. How does high humidity in storage areas affect food safety? A. It makes the food taste better. B. It has no effect on food safety. C. It increases the risk of mold and bacterial growth. D. It prolongs the shelf life of food. Answer. C. It increases the risk of mold and bacterial growth. High humidity in storage areas can increase the risk of mold and bacterial growth, compromising food safety. Question 26. Describe the proper procedures for safely marinating meat and poultry in a commercial kitchen setting. A. Marinate at room temperature. B. Use the same marinade for multiple types of meat. C. Marinate in a refrigerator and avoid cross-contamination. D. Discard the marinade after use on raw meat. Answer. C. Marinate in a refrigerator and avoid cross-contamination. D. Discard the marinade after use on raw meat. Safely marinating meat and poultry involves marinating in a refrigerator to control temperature and avoiding cross-contamination, and discarding the marinade after use to prevent bacterial growth. Question 27. What steps should be taken in case of a power outage in a food establishment? A. Continue operating as usual. B. Discard all food immediately. C. Monitor the temperature and discard food that has been in the danger zone for over two hours. D. Serve only cold dishes. Answer. C. Monitor the temperature and discard food that has been in the danger zone for over two hours. In case of a power outage, it's important to monitor the temperature of stored food and discard any that has been in the danger zone. 40 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit or 4 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius for over two hours. Question 28. Describe the proper method of calibrating a food thermometer. A. Dip in boiling water and adjust to 212 degree Fahrenheit, 100 degree Celsius. B. Place in a freezer and adjust to 0 degree Fahrenheit, minus 18 degree Celsius. C. Adjust it based on room temperature. D. Calibration is not necessary for food thermometers. Answer. A. Dip in boiling water and adjust to 212 degree Fahrenheit, 100 degree Celsius. Calibrating a food thermometer typically involves dipping it in boiling water and adjusting it to read 212 degree Fahrenheit, 100 degree Celsius, the boiling point of water. Question 29. What is the importance of a food safety management system in a restaurant? A. It helps to reduce food costs. B. It ensures compliance with food safety regulations. C. It's only important for large restaurants. D. It focuses on the marketing of the restaurant. Answer. B. It ensures compliance with food safety regulations. A food safety management system is important in a restaurant as it ensures compliance with food safety regulations and helps in maintaining consistent food safety practices. Question 30. How should a food handler deal with cuts or wounds on their hands? A. Continue working but avoid handling food. B. Cover the wound with a bandage and wear gloves. C. Take a day off. D. Wash hands and use hand sanitizer only. Answer. B. Cover the wound with a bandage and wear gloves. If a food handler has cuts or wounds on their hands, they should cover the wound with a bandage and wear gloves while handling food to prevent contamination. Question 31. What are the safe practices for serving food to highly susceptible populations? A. Serve only raw foods. B. Follow stricter food safety guidelines and temperature controls. C. Exclude dairy products from the menu. D. Serve food at room temperature. Answer. B. Follow stricter food safety guidelines and temperature controls. Serving food to highly susceptible populations, such as the elderly, young children, or immunocompromised individuals, requires following stricter food safety guidelines and temperature controls to minimize the risk of foodborne illness. 
Question 32. Explain the difference between use by, sell by, and expiration dates on food products. A. They all mean the same thing. B. Use by indicates food quality, sell by it is for store stock control, and expiration is the last safe consumption date. C. Expiration date is for canned goods only. D. Sell by is the only relevant date for consumers. Answer. B. Use by indicates food quality, sell by is for store stock control, and expiration is the last safe consumption date. The use by date indicates the quality of the food, the sell by date is used for store stock control, and the expiration date marks the last day the product is safe to consume. Question 33. How should live shellfish be stored and handled in a food establishment? A. In aerated containers. B. At room temperature. C. Submerged in water. D. In a self-draining container at temperatures of 34 degree Fahrenheit to 45 degree Fahrenheit. 1 degree Celsius to 7 degree Celsius. Answer. D. In a self-draining container at temperatures of 34 degree Fahrenheit to 45 degree Fahrenheit. 1 degree Celsius to 7 degree Celsius. Live shellfish should be stored and handled in a self-draining container at temperatures between 34 degree Fahrenheit and 45 degree Fahrenheit, 1 degree Celsius and 7 degree Celsius, to maintain freshness and prevent bacterial growth. Question 34. What are the guidelines for safe use of gloves in food handling? A. Reuse gloves for different tasks. B. Change gloves between tasks and when they become contaminated. C. Use only latex gloves. D. Wash and reuse gloves to save resources. Answer. B. Change gloves between tasks and when they become contaminated. Safe use of gloves in food handling involves changing gloves between tasks and when they become contaminated to prevent cross-contamination. Question 35. Describe the guidelines for the safe handling and storage of dairy products in a commercial kitchen setting. A. Store above raw meats in the refrigerator. B. Keep at room temperature to enhance flavor. C. Store at temperatures of 45 degree Fahrenheit, 7 degree Celsius, or below. D. Freeze all dairy products to extend shelf life. Answer. C. Store at temperatures of 45 degree Fahrenheit, 7 degree Celsius, or below. Dairy products should be stored at temperatures of 45 degree Fahrenheit, 7 degree Celsius, or below to prevent bacterial growth and maintain quality. Question 36. What are the requirements for a food establishment's water supply in terms of safety and sanitation? A. Use only bottled water. B. Water must come from an approved public source or be treated to be potable. C. Boil all water before use. D. Use untreated rainwater for sustainability. Answer. B. Water must come from an approved public source or be treated to be potable. The water supply in a food establishment must be from an approved public source or treated to ensure it is potable and safe for consumption and food preparation. Question 37. How should you handle a situation where a food handler is diagnosed with a reportable illness? A. Allow them to continue working, but avoid direct food contact. B. Report to the local health authorities and exclude the individual from food handling. C. No action required if they feel well. D. Give them a different uniform to wear. Answer. B. Report to the local health authorities and exclude the individual from food handling. When a food handler is diagnosed with a reportable illness, it should be reported to the local health authorities, and the individual should be excluded from food handling to prevent contamination. Question 38. What is the proper procedure for disposing of spoiled or contaminated food? A. Dispose of it with regular waste. B. Domain it to food banks. C. Label and separate it from other waste, then dispose of it safely. D. Use it in compost. Answer. C. Label and separate it from other waste, then dispose of it safely. Spoiled or contaminated food should be labeled and separated from other waste and disposed of safely to prevent cross-contamination. Question 39. 
What are the guidelines for safely incorporating edible flowers in food preparation in a commercial kitchen? A. Use only pesticide-free and food-grade flowers. B. Wash with hot water. C. Use any garden flower for garnishing. D. Freeze them before use. Answer. A. Use only pesticide-free and food-grade flowers. When incorporating edible flowers in food preparation, it is important to use only those that are pesticide-free and safe for consumption. Question 40. What are the key elements of a food recall plan? A. Ignoring customer complaints and waiting for official reports. B. Identifying affected products, notifying relevant parties, and effectively removing products. C. Offering discounts on future purchases. D. Only recalling expired products. Answer. B. Identifying affected products, notifying relevant parties, and effectively removing products. The key elements of a food recall plan include identifying the affected products, notifying relevant parties such as authorities and consumers, and effectively removing the products from distribution and sale. Question 41. Explain the significance of maintaining proper air temperature and quality in food storage areas. A. To enhance the flavor of the food. B. To reduce cooking time. C. To prevent the growth of pathogens and spoilage. D. To reduce energy costs. Answer. C. To prevent the growth of pathogens and spoilage. Proper air temperature and quality in food storage areas are crucial to prevent the growth of pathogens and spoilage of food. Question 42. What are the legal responsibilities of a food establishment in preventing foodborne illness? A. Providing discounts to customers. B. Ensuring all staff are trained in food safety. C. Serving food quickly. T. Focusing on profits over safety. Answer. B. Ensuring all staff are trained in food safety. It is a legal responsibility of a food establishment to ensure that all staff are adequately trained in food safety to prevent foodborne illnesses. Question 43. Describe the measures to be taken for effective pest control in a food service establishment. A. Regular cleaning, sealing entry points, and using pesticides. B. Ignoring minor pest sightings. C using only natural pest repellents. D, keeping doors and windows open for ventilation. Answer, A, regular cleaning, sealing entry points, and using pesticides. Effective pest control involves regular cleaning, sealing potential entry points, and appropriately using pesticides when necessary. Question 44, what are the essential steps to follow when introducing a new menu item to ensure it meets food safety standards? A. Randomly selecting ingredients. B. Skipping taste tests. C. Conducting a hazard analysis and training staff. D. Focusing solely on presentation. Answer. C. Conducting a hazard analysis and training staff. When introducing a new menu item, it is essential to conduct a hazard analysis and train staff to ensure it meets food safety standards. Question 45. What are the best practices for transporting food safely? A. Transporting at room temperature. B. Using any container available. C. Maintaining appropriate temperatures and using food-grade containers. D. Stacking all food items together. Answer. C. Maintaining appropriate temperatures and using food-grade containers. Safe food transportation requires maintaining appropriate temperatures and using food-grade containers to prevent contamination. Question 46. What are the best practices for safely handling and preparing vegan dishes to avoid cross-contact with allergens? A. Using the same utensils for all dishes. B. Using designated equipment and utensils and thorough cleaning. C. Cooking vegan dishes after all other dishes. D. Avoiding the use of spices. Answer. B. Using designated equipment and utensils and thorough cleaning. To avoid cross-contact with allergens when preparing vegan dishes, it is best to use designated equipment and utensils and ensure thorough cleaning. Question 47. What is the impact of personal hygiene on food safety? A. It has no impact. 
B. It is less important than kitchen cleanliness. C. It is crucial in preventing cross-contamination. D. It only matters for chefs, not other staff. Answer. C. It is crucial in preventing cross-contamination. Personal hygiene is crucial in food safety, as it helps in preventing cross-contamination from staff to food. Question 48. How should you respond to a customer complaint about food safety? A. Ignore the complaint. B. Take the complaint seriously, investigate, and take appropriate action. C. Blame the customer. D. Offer a refund only. Answer. B. Take the complaint seriously, investigate, and take appropriate action. Responding to a customer complaint about food safety involves taking the complaint seriously, investigating the issue, and taking appropriate corrective action. Question 49. What are the guidelines for proper waste disposal and sanitation in a food establishment? A. Disposing of waste irregularly. B. Mixing all waste together. C. Regular removal, segregation, and using designated bins. D. Burning waste in the kitchen. Answer. C. Regular removal, segregation, and using designated bins. Proper waste disposal and sanitation involve regular removal of waste, segregation of different types of waste, and using designated bins. Question 50. How should a food establishment effectively train its staff in allergy awareness and customer communication? A. By only training new staff. B. Through regular, comprehensive training and clear communication protocols. C. Assuming staff know from personal experience. D. Avoiding serving customers with allergies. Answer. B. Through regular, comprehensive training and clear communication protocols. Effective training in allergy awareness and customer communication involves regular comprehensive training for staff and establishing clear communication protocols. Question 51. How does the layout of a kitchen affect food safety practices? A. It has no impact on food safety. B. An efficient layout can reduce the risk of cross-contamination. C. Only modern layouts are safe. D. The layout only affects the speed of service. Answer. B. An efficient layout can reduce the risk of cross-contamination. The layout of a kitchen affects food safety practices, as an efficient layout can help in reducing the risk of cross-contamination and improving overall safety. Question 52. What are the safe procedures for handling ready-to-eat foods? A. Handling with bare hands. B. Using clean and sanitized utensils, wearing gloves. C. Using the same utensils for raw and cooked foods. D. Tasting with the same spoon used for cooking. Answer. B. Using clean and sanitized utensils, wearing gloves. Safe procedures for handling ready-to-eat foods include using clean and sanitized utensils and wearing gloves to prevent contamination. Question 53. What are the critical steps to be taken for maintaining food safety during large-scale outdoor events or festivals? A. Serving only pre-packaged foods. B. Ignoring temperature control. C. Ensuring proper food temperature control and hygiene practices. D. Focusing only on the quantity of food. Answer. C. Ensuring proper food temperature control and hygiene practices. During large-scale outdoor events or festivals, it is critical to ensure proper food temperature control and maintain hygiene practices to ensure food safety. Question 54. What are the consequences of not adhering to local health department regulations? A. There are no consequences. B. Improvement in staff morale. C. Possible fines, closure, and legal action. D. Increased customer satisfaction. Answer. C. Possible fines, closure, and legal action. Not adhering to local health department regulations can result in consequences such as fines, closure of the establishment, and legal action. Question 55. How should a food handler address a situation where they observe unsafe food practices in the workplace? A. Ignore and continue working. B. Participate in the unsafe practices. C. Report to a supervisor or manager immediately. D. 
wait for someone else to report it? Answer, C, report to a supervisor or manager immediately. If a food handler observes unsafe food practices in the workplace, they should report it to a supervisor or manager immediately for corrective action. Question 56. What are the guidelines for effective hand washing stations in a food service establishment? A. Stations are optional. B. Providing hot and cold running water, soap, and a means to dry hands. C. Using a single towel for all staff. D. Washing hands in dish sinks. Answer. B. Providing hot and cold running water, soap, and a means to dry hands. Effective hand washing stations in a food service establishment must provide hot and cold running water, soap, and a means to dry hands. Question 57. Describe the procedures for safely handling food during a natural disaster or emergency. A. Continue usual practices. B. Discard all food immediately. C. Use only non-perishable foods. D. Assess food safety risks and discard any compromised items. Answer. D. Assess food safety risks and discard any compromised items. During a natural disaster or emergency, it is important to assess food safety risks and discard any food items that may have been compromised. Question 58. How should a food establishment manage food safety during special events or catering? A. Lowering the standards for quicker service. B. Following the same food safety protocols as in the restaurant. C. Serving only cold dishes. D. Hiring untrained temporary staff. Answer. B. Following the same food safety protocols as in the restaurant, during special events or catering, a food establishment should manage food safety by following the same protocols as they would in the restaurant. Question 59. What are the considerations for safely using and storing food additives and preservatives? A. Using them in all dishes. B. Following manufacturer's instructions and regulations. C. Avoiding their use completely. D. Storing them with cleaning chemicals. Answer. B. Following manufacturer's instructions and regulations. When using and storing food additives and preservatives, it is important to follow the manufacturer's instructions and adhere to regulations to ensure safety. Question 60. Describe the process for safely handling and preparing food for off-site consumption. A. Ignoring temperature controls. B. Maintaining appropriate temperatures, using proper containers, and labeling. C. Using the same containers for all types of food. D. Preparing food several days in advance. Answer. B. Maintaining appropriate temperatures, using proper containers, and labeling. Safely handling and preparing food for off-site consumption involves maintaining appropriate temperatures, using proper containers, and labeling to ensure food safety.